Lightyear Investing app continues to grow here in the UK and across Europe in particular. They've recently launched their new website. So today we are going to have a good look through that website and see what there is in there that's going to help you as an investor. Just before I get started, there is a lot of fluff flying around on the internet about investing being this some kind of sure thing is an absolute guaranteed way to make money over the long term. It's not that. So anytime I am talking about investing on this channel or putting your money to work, I'm going to make sure there's a little disclaimer at the bottom of the screen to let you know that investing is not without risk. Any kind of money going into a variable investment like stocks and shares, for example, means that your capital is at risk. Stocks can go up and they can go down and you may get less back than you put in. All right, so with that said, let's go and have a look at the web app. So here we are on the Lightyear homepage. They're announcing that they have launched Lightyear on the web. So let's just take a look at that. So to get into Lightyear, you have to scan the barcode and you need the app to be able to log into the website. So let's just do that quickly. You get a little notification to say that it is in fact you that's trying to get in. Click yes, and there we go. It's all very nice. All right, so we have got logged in here on the website then. Let's just go over the screen that we can see. You've got a summary of your portfolio, exactly how much is there, your performance overall so far, and obviously the, the balance. You can see I've made a fairly chunky withdrawal recently. Over on the right, we have a search bar, able to search for all the different things we may be interested in. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Just below that, we have our cash balances. Lightyear is a multi-currency platform, so you can have balances in sterling, US dollars, and in euros. We have an investment calendar which will give you information on significant events that are coming up for stocks you own. So maybe it's a dividend payment or there's a some kind of reporting coming out, something like that. You're going to see all that information in this investment calendar area. And you have your investments down here at the moment. My position with Lightyear is entirely in cash, but that's for another project that I'm working on. And we'll get to that in a future video. Finally, down at the bottom, if I move my big head out of the road, you can see that the website is very much in beta and Lightyear are very much interested in getting your thoughts on how you're finding the web application. So that's a very quick overview of the homepage. Let's get into some of the more interesting things about the web app. Over on the left hand side, uh, we have a portfolio button. As I say, I don't have any stocks and shares at this point in time. So we can look at that later. And we have this star, which represents a watch list. So there's plenty in my watch list. I have uh, Vanguard, FTSE, All World, High Dividend Yield, DraftKings, SoFi Technology, Disney, Apple, and so on down the list. It's a good way of keeping the stocks that you're interested in or the things you might be thinking about buying. It's a good way to keep them all together in one sort of handy spot. Over here on the right hand side is the most watched section. You can get a feel for how people are thinking about investing. These are the 50 most watched instruments on Lightyear ranked by the most watched by the customers. So these are all the things that people are very much thinking about putting their money into. Similarly to the homepage, there is a watch list calendar so you can see upcoming events and things that have happened in the past for stocks and shares and instruments that you have been watching. And there's plenty of information and it's all pretty well organized by date. You can click on any one of these pieces of news to get more information down the right hand side. So here's some information on Coca-Cola for example. Here's some information on Apple and how they paid their dividends and so forth. All that stuff is chronological so it makes it very easy to navigate and to get the information you're looking for. Let's just go back to the homepage. So anyone who has watched this channel for any length of time will know that I am keen on investing in ETFs. So I wanna search for my favorite ETF. There's, there's two ways to do that. The first is simply to click on the search bar and search for something like VUSA, and that'll give us the Vanguard S&P 500. The other way, which is very cool, is to hit your command button on a Mac or a Windows key on a Windows machine and command K. Now. I love a keyboard shortcut. This is the first web app I've seen this do this so clearly and so succinctly. There are keyboard shortcuts for many of the functions. And I love a keyboard shortcut. It just makes things so much simpler than wiggling a mouse about. You just get your command key, command K, and you've got your search bar up. That's brilliant. So I can search for VUSA and get Vanguard S&P 500. So from the screen then you can get an awful lot more information about the fund. We just scroll down a little bit and tell you the fund size, dividend yield, Dividend rate tells you a little bit about the fund. This fund aims to track the S&P 500, the 500 largest US stocks. Some of the information is a pretty obvious to some, not so obvious to others. And I love the way that they've laid this out. There's plenty of white space. It's easy to read. It's easy to break down and tell you all about the annual fund charges, which is good. Five year return. Slightly further down, you can see the fund breakdown in this nice pie graphic here. So Apple makes up 6.59% of this particular fund, Microsoft, Amazon, Nvidia, and so on. 
that's the top holdings. You can go in and look at the sectors. So whether you're investing in technologies, 31%, healthcare, nearly 14%, financials, just 125 and a half. And you can see the countries then. 96% of this fund is based in the USA, which makes sense since it's tracking the S&P 500. Further on down, there is more information about this particular fund and you can see the key information document. It'll take you straight to Vanguard and you can read all the technical information about your funds. Look at the risk and reward profile. All that's on the Vanguard website and we're kind of getting out of scope here a little bit. But all that information for that particular ETF or any ETF for that matter is there and it's very, very easy to digest in my opinion. Okay, so I've just realized that I'm on the Euros version of the S&P 500 here. So let's again just go and search for VUSA and we'll move it on to uh, our pound sterling equivalent here. Um, what I'm going to do is just buy one just to let you see how that looks on the website. So we get to preview the buy. It gives you all this kind of order summary and confirmation. Anyone who's used the app will recognize this kind of layout and we'll hit confirm. And it goes through pretty quick. Um, now the markets are closed at the moment that I'm recording this video. So as soon as the markets open, that will be action for me. Um, we will own one more unit of the S&P 500. All right, so let's go back to the home page here. Another nice cool feature of the search facility here is the ability to filter what you're searching for. So maybe you're looking for some inspiration or you know for absolute certainty that you want to invest in ETFs. You can click the ETFs filter here and it will cut that whole list out just in the ETFs. Maybe you only want to invest in UK shares. Then you can do that with that filter and you can stack these filters on top of each other so you can look at UK shares and you can look at the popular ones and oh dear oh dear it's Manchester United. Well less said about that the better. Maybe you're interested in fractional shares. That's a scenario where maybe you don't have enough money for something like Apple, which can be quite expensive at $193 currently. Maybe you only have $100 that you want to invest in Apple. You can absolutely do that. All you have to do is say how much you have to spend on Apple shares and it will tell you approximately how many shares you're going to get for the amount you put in. Very handy, very, very smooth. So perhaps you've got an idea to buy Apple here. What kind of information are Lightyear giving you? to help you make that decision. Well, if we scroll on down a little bit here, you can see the metrics in a similar way you could to the funds. You can see that for individual stocks as well. So you can see a market cap currently for Apple of over $3 trillion. It's a price to earnings ratio of about 32, it might be considered high. Earnings per share, $5.89 and so on. You get dividend information, dividend yields. And then this interesting portion here is what the analysts think. There are 42 analysts here. now. It doesn't exactly say who these analysts are, but if we click for more information about this data, it says that the data is updated daily and sourced from a third party, Refinitiv. This information certainly shouldn't be construed as investment advice. As I say, I don't really know who these analysts are, but it is good to see this kind of information to get a feel for what sort of thing you're investing in and whether or not it's good value. So you can see that the average price target for these analysts was $188. It's currently at $193. So According to this information, there's going to be a 2.45% downside to investing in Apple today. Now, no one knows the future. It's just more information to help you form your own opinion about what you're investing in. Further on down, we can look at the financial performance. We can look at income statements, balance sheets, cash flow. All that information is available to you there. A little further down, we get into earnings performance and we can see how Apple performed against market expectations in each of the different quarters. And finally, down at the bottom, if you are following Apple in particular or any stock on Lightyear, they're all going to have their own news section. And this news is filterable by whether you want to see them all, whether you want to read some articles or whether you want to watch some videos. It's all really good stuff. And it's just a way of getting some information to you that would otherwise be a bit tricky maybe to go out onto the Internet to try and find. Again, down the right hand side, there are upcoming events calendar. There aren't any coming up, but we certainly can look at the events that have happened in the recent past for Apple. Again, these are all in chronological order and gives you some nice information for shareholders and anyone interested or thinking about investing in Apple. One thing I haven't covered just yet is how to put your money in and how to withdraw it from Lightyear. Where we find it is by clicking in one of our balances here of the multi-currency account. And from here we can deposit, we can convert from one currency to another and we can withdraw. So let's look at the Sterling account for example. At the moment they are paying 4.25% interest a year in uninvested cash. That is pretty juicy compared to some of the rates we've been used to over the past few years. Now, Lightyear is not a bank 
Um, so whether or not you want to keep big chunks of cash in here would be entirely up to you. But this is very useful for people who like to move in and out of positions. It's not particularly my style, but 4.25% is not to be sniffed at. It basically tracks the Bank of England base rate minus 0.75% and that is what uh, Lightyear will pay you. Interest is earned daily and it's paid on the first of every month, which is kind of convenient. Anyway, if we are looking to deposit into Lightyear, we can make bank transfers and here is the information that you can use to do that. Other deposit methods are on the way for the website. Easy bank transfers are coming soon, but they're not supported yet. And the same with card payments. They are also not supported at this point in time. In terms of converting, well, you just choose which currency you want to convert from and convert to. If the idea here is you're gonna buy a lot of US-based stocks like Amazon or Tesla, it might be a good idea to have some of your money as US dollars. And of course there is a withdrawal as well. I've done this twice already. I've withdrawn a couple of chunky payments um, from Lightyear already and it was in my bank instantly. There was no delay, no waiting around three to five days or anything like that. The money was in my account within moments. So that's all pretty reliable as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's good to know that your money is easily accessible. So lots of really interesting features for me there. I really like the keyboard shortcuts. I really like all the information that they have on given stocks and funds. I really like the white space. I really like the way it's all laid out and everything's pretty clear and there's nice tabs for related sections. I think it's really useful to anyone who's trying to get more information on what they're investing in. So do let me know what you think of Lightyear's web app in the comments. What would you add? Is there anything else you would add to the web app? They're always listening out for suggestions. It's currently in beta, so there's more to come. Let me know in the comments what you would add next and I'll see you in the next video.